Hello. You know, it's amazing how fast time flies. I can't believe I've been working in companies and organizations for over 30 years. Now, in all of that time, I've met a lot of amazing people from whom I've learned a tremendous amount. And right now, I want to spend a few minutes talking about what I've learned in terms of success, what it's built on, and what we can do to better maintain our success. Now, I'm going to start with this bottle of water. I like to drink cold water. This water's warm. So what should I do with it? I could stick it in the refrigerator, or I could pour it in a glass with some ice, and after a few moments, the water will be cold. But what just happened? Did the ice cool the water? Well, what we know from the work of the classical physicists in thermodynamics is that, in fact, the heat, which is energy, travels from the warm water to the cold ice, thereby cooling the water and warming the ice. What this second law of thermodynamics tells us is that energy always moves from warm to cold, from being more organized and dense to being random. Energy dissipates, it disintegrates. This is the basis for entropy. Entropy is the idea that a system, a closed system, left to itself, will decay, will break down, because the energy disintegrates. Now, this basic law of nature has implications way beyond cooling my water. And I've learned from it, Dr. Ichakadizis that it even has implications for our levels of success that we experience individually, in our families, and in our businesses. Now, all of us in here together, we could start a big business. Granted, this would be kind of a large startup, so if you guys don't mind, maybe we'll start with the people in the front row right here, start our company, and as it grows, we can bring other people in. But we could build a business based on whatever product or idea we have. And what we would, in fact, be doing is we'd be creating a system in which we create value, we transfer that value to customers in the form of sales, who then pay us for it, and hopefully we make some money. That's the idea. But as we just heard, a system by nature breaks down. The energy disintegrates. And in a system like a company or an organization, this disintegration happens even faster. Why? Because the system's made of people. We've got our group here that's going to have a startup company. And in this group, we have very different people with diverse needs and diverse wants, different interests, different styles of working and making decisions. And all of that diversity makes us go in different directions. And so we're stretching the organization or the company this way and that way. And so we've got entropy with energy disintegrating, plus diversity. And now we've got diversity and disintegration on steroids. Things can break down like that before you know it. Right? So what do we learn in management education to try to overcome this disintegration of energy? What we learn is we need leadership. We need strong leaders who can keep people focused and their energy is going in the right direction. Right? And these leaders have management tools. They have vision statements and corporate missions and corporate values that they use to keep people focused, going in the same direction, channeling their energy. They've got studies in team dynamics and more leadership with more tools in which we can build a strong and aligned group of people. And all of these are valid tools. They'll all work. But how well they work and how sustainable they are is based on one underlying factor. One thing that has to exist in our group for these tools to work well and to work for the long term. That one underlying factor is that we have an environment in our company in which the people trust and respect each other. That has to exist. 
Because if it doesn't, what happens when we have problems, when we have serious challenges? How likely are the people, if they don't trust and respect each other, to seek each other out, to work collaboratively, to try to deal with these problems? But that's what companies need. That's what organizations need. They need people to work together, to collaborate, to produce innovation, to move the organization forward, to make it more successful. And the key to getting these people to work together to make the organization successful is to have trust and respect. Now, you know this is true within yourself. If you think about whatever level of success you currently have, what is it built on? It's built on, at the core, your self-respect and your self-trust. These things give you self-confidence because you trust in your decisions, you trust in your ideas, you have respect for who you are as a person and who you are not. And with these things, you have self-confidence. Think about the person you know who has no self-respect and no self-trust. This person will struggle. And why? Because they're filled with self-doubt. They're filled with fears. They have a constant dialogue going on in their head about, oh, should I take this decision? I don't know what to do. I'm scared. What do people think of me? Why doesn't anybody like me? And their energy is disintegrating. Right? through these different directions. When will this person start to function? When they develop some self-confidence, when they develop trust in themselves and respect in themselves. Then the self-doubts, then the fears start to subside. And this conversation, this these negative dialogue going on in their head, the voices of dissension calm down. And now what? The energy is all available to be channeled and focused they can go out and become a more productive member of their community and have a much better chance of reaching some level of success. Now, it's no different between groups of people. If we want a group of people to be successful, to be productive, to be high performing, they have to have trust and respect between each other. Now, the most basic group in our society is the family. What happens in a family if the parents lose trust in their kids? Or if the kids, the children, no longer respect their parents? This can create a huge problem as the family members are now all working to protect themselves from one another. Now, if in an individual we build trust and respect within ourselves, in groups we do it between people. But how do we do that? We have our company here. I can't just go to the founders of our company here and say, you guys trust and respect each other and expect that'll do it. Right? It won't, why not? Because trust and respect are not actions. They're feelings, they're emotions, they're beliefs we have about people. And for trust, the belief I have about somebody I trust is that this person won't do anything to hurt me. Won't do anything to undermine my interests. And the most trust comes about when I see this person's actions, which are good for him, are also good for me. We're most likely to get this type of trust when we have shared interests. When we're both working towards the same outcome, which is big enough for both of us. That's the basis for trust. Think about the person you know who is always working in their own self-interest while disregarding your interests. Quickly you lose trust for this person. We trust people who take our interests to heart. What about respect? To paraphrase the philosopher Immanuel Kant, he said in so many words that respect means fully recognizing the right of another individual to think differently from you. That's respect. How do you show disrespect to somebody? When you say, how can you think that? That's crazy. Nobody thinks that way. What you're really saying is, I don't respect your thoughts. I have no respect for your words. 
Respecting somebody's words and thoughts doesn't mean you have to agree with them. What it means is you listen to them, you take them seriously, you consider them. This is treating people fairly, this is treating people with respect, and this is the basis for learning. I seek out and learn from people I respect. I trust people who share my interests. This is basis for healthy relationships. And for healthy organizations, for more successful organizations, we need healthy relationships within them. Yet when you look into organizations, into companies, what do you find? You find management against employees, groups of employees against other groups of employees, sales against marketing, marketing against production, and on and on. You find senior management teams that when times get tough, will sacrifice their lower people to protect their own interests. You get systems and policies in place that breed distrust. I was talking with the CEO of a manufacturing company. He said, Greg, I need my salespeople to be more assertive, to take more initiative. Now they sit and wait for the phone to ring. They don't go out and build business. I need them to take more risks. I said, yeah, that sounds really important. So I went and talked to one of his salespeople. And he said, I'm not going to take any risks for this company. I said, well, why not? He said, because when I started working here, the first thing I had to do was sign this piece of paper that says if I lose the company any money, I have to pay it back. Right? The first message from management is that we have to protect ourselves from you. I can tell you about an HR director of a local company with 300 people. She was asked to organize an employee event. In so doing, she wanted to spend 70 euros to buy t-shirts. Before she could spend that money, she had to go and get not one, not two, but three signatures from three different managers to spend 70 euros. It's a company that makes millions and millions of euros every year in sales. And they can't trust a group of managers to make a 70 euro decision. Compare that to Lars Kolen, who took over as CEO at a Danish hearing aid manufacturer called Oticon. When he took over, he completely dismantled the system of pre-approvals for company travel. Just threw it out, worth a little more than 70 euros. When he introduced his new system, this is what he said, now pay attention. He said, I trust that you know when you need to travel. So from now on, if you need to travel, just go. Don't go get approvals from anybody. Just get on the plane and fly. But keep in mind two things. One, the travel should, must be related to our mission to give hearing impaired people a normal quality of life. And two, the travel has to be justifiable enough that you would pay for it yourself if you had to. So what happened? As people started policing their own behavior, the company saw its travel expenses drop by nearly 30% almost immediately. Why? Because people acknowledged that they could no longer justify always flying business class. He went on to turn this $25 million business into a half billion dollar business over 10 years by focusing on building trust and respect in the organization. Um, this is what companies need. This is what we need to build, right? We need to integrate people. We need to get people to work together so that they will solve problems rather than look for who's to blame for the problems. And this is the job of leadership, to get very different people to work together so their differences work synergistically so that we enrich each other with our differences and learn from our differences rather than just fight over our differences. And how does a leader do this? By creating a culture in which people trust and respect each other. This is how we raise our kids, isn't it? Right? How do you make a family out of all these different peoples? You are different from your spouse. You and your spouse are different from the kids. The kids are all different from each other. This can be a mess. How do you make a family out of it? There must be trust and respect. 
We must respect each other's differences as individuals, and we must share the mutual interest as a family. Remember, the energy in this warm water, by the laws of nature, disintegrates. And it's the same in a company. And I would like to suggest that it's the same in a country. If you are a CEO or a prime minister, this is the most important job you have to do, is how to build a culture in your company, in your country, where mutual trust and respect dominate. Because when the trust is gone, when the respect is gone, the company, the country, won't be more successful, but they will struggle and they may even disappear. Thank you very much.